Hey guys, what's happening? In today's SwiftUI tutorial, we're going to be building a horizontal bar chart. How I came upon this idea is I was working on one of my apps, Rain Tracker, and I was looking through all these third party plugins for charts, and none of them really seemed that good and what I wanted. So I thought, hey, why not just have a go at building one myself? And it actually turned out to be a bit easier than I thought. So I thought I'd share it with you guys here. Um, I'll leave a link in the description to that app if you want to check it out. Um, but otherwise, uh, let's get started. Creating a new SwiftUI project. This is an iOS app that we're building. I'm going to call it Horizontal Bar Chart Tutorial and just hit next and create. First thing we're going to do is just say Command N to create a new Swift file. And this is going to be called Week Data. And this is going to store our data that we're going to display in our bar chart. So I'm just creating a struct which conforms to identifiable. And I'm just going to give it an ID of a new UID. It's going to have a variable weekday as well as some sales. Um, I'm just making this up basically because I want to have some data to show. And we're going to create a variable calling it week sales, which is going to be an array of our week data struct. We're going to create seven objects of our week data type. Uh, the first one being Monday. And for the sales, we're going to create a function calling it random number that is just going to return a random number. Yeah, we're going to return a double, just calling double random in zero to 4,000. Cool, and then with our week data, we're just going to copy and paste down that six more times and just changing the weekday to the appropriate day of the week and adding some commas. Cool, and then we're gonna create one more function which is going to be our largest sales. So we're gonna say largest sales is going to return a double. We're gonna declare a variable calling it largest which is initialized to zero. And then we're gonna go through each one of our week data in our week sales. And we're gonna say if our week data sales is greater than the largest, then the current week data sales is now the largest. And it'll come in handy later because each of our horizontal bar charts size or width is going to be relative to the largest one. Cool, so we're gonna head back into the content view now and we're going to remove the hello world text and enter in a geometry reader. Inside our geometry reader, we're gonna have geometry in. And then inside here, we're gonna insert a V stack. Our V stack is going to have alignment of leading, spacing zero, and the content we're just going to use some curly brackets and we're just going to give our v stack some vertical padding inside our v stack we're going to add some text we're just going to call this weekly sales uh, so this is just going to be a header a font title and a bit of padding and before we enter anything for our bar chart we're going to say let row height equal to our geometry size height so the current screen's height and we're going to divide it by a cg float of our week sales count so divided by seven in our instance and then for each of our week sales, we're going to look through and create a H stack. This H stack, we're going to give it some padding horizontally. And we're going to say the frame max height is equal to our row height. Inside our H stack, we're going to enter some text. And this is going to be of our weekday. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, etc. We're going to give it a font of caption and we're going to make this font bold. Next, we're going to work out our label width. So we're going to say label width is equal to geometry size width. And we're going to times it by 0.09. We're going to also create our graph width and our value width. So we're going to have our three different parts all going across. Uh, these need to definitely be less than one, the total of the what we're timesing it by. Basically, it actually comes in slightly under one because we want to allow for a little bit of padding. So we're going to set our weekday max width equal to our label width and max height infinity and alignment is going to be center. And then just below that, we're going to say row width is equal to calculate row width. We're going to create a function for this and we're going to pass through our graph width as well as our week data. And so I'm just going to copy that and enter our function now below. And so our graph width is of type double and our week data is of our week data type. And for this function, we're going to return a double and we're just going to say let size equal to week data sales divided by larger sales times our graph width. And then we can just return our size is nan. We're going to return zero. Otherwise, we're just going to return our size. So now we can create our rectangle because we know the width and height we need to make it. We're going to give our rectangle a corner radius of five. Uh, vertical padding is going to be five as well. Our frame, we're going to set our max width to infinity. And then below that, we're going to do another frame with the max width of row width and the max height of infinity and our alignment leading. So just copy and pasted that down from our weekday text. And the foreground color, we're going to set to blue. And then below that, we're going to insert a text, which we're going to format the sales of our week data. So just going to create a function that receives our week data. And we're going to add a dollar sign to the weekly sales. 
So we're just gonna return a string from our format sales string format and our format is gonna be yeah, a dollar sign and then we're gonna do percentage 2F, so to two decimal places of our week data sales. And then we can give that text font of caption two and copy down our frame line and just change it to value width. Cool, and I think that's everything. It should work no matter the values that it's given. So it'll always sort of have the biggest one uh, taking up most of the screen and then the, all of the other ones sort of relatively off it. So if I just build and run this and we're getting different random numbers, you can see that the sales are changing and the chart is updating. There you have it. They say you build a horizontal bar chart in Swift UI from scratch, no frameworks. I uh, hope you learned something and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers.